Whatever happened to the Eldar? I feel like I never hear about them. They're one of the most pivotal races in the 40k universe, but they always feel like a tertiary faction. We've got billions of troopers, OP space super soldiers, undead Egyptian skeletons, green soccer hooligans, the Zerg, four different flavors of nope. Uh, yeah, and uh, there's also space elves. And yes, I can already see your comment, Josh. The Eldar have plenty of fans, but I'm pretty plugged into 40K and I don't see the Eldar nearly as much as I see the other factions. So I'm gonna try them out. I used to not like the Tau, but then I read a bunch of their lore and I painted a bunch of their models and I think they're pretty cool now. So I'm gonna give the Eldar the same treatment and who knows, I might find a new thing I like. I'm gonna paint up the Eldar from the Nachmund kill team box. This box. These guys seem pretty neat, but look at all them details. I don't see the Corsairs pop up on social media as much as the other kill teams, and I wonder if people are intimidated by all that stuff. Holsters, pouches, gems. I have my work cut out for me. Also, I'm insecure, so I need my guys to be a little different, and I'm using the Games Workshop Bizarre model to stand in for the, um, the, uh, the... Felark. Similar unit, similar name. But I have an idea of how to tackle these knife ears, and step one was zenithalling them with a cream color instead of white. This will keep my colors nice and saturated, where color over white tends to look desaturated. I will paint all their weapons and capes as step one. Put some speed paint palette bone over my tan zenithal. The Eldars don't build their stuff out of plastic and steel like the rest of the galaxy's losers, but instead manifest their tech into existence using pure magic. The Eldar have the ability to drag warp energy into real space into a solid material called Wraithbone which gives them a really interesting parallel with their arch rivals, the Necrons and their Necrodermis. Both factions have the ability to alter their weapons and armor at will. It's basically magic plastic. So this creamy white brown means that my weapons and equipment are already done. These models are intimidating, but look at me go. I've already got something finished. I can use contrast paints to quickly base coat, shade and highlight everything. Now these fellas, the Corsairs, they're not your mama's Eldar. These are outcasts. In my research, I learned possibly my new favorite word, piratical. This means something typical of, or relating to, a pirate. These are Eldar pirates, made up of flunkies from all three branches of the Eldar. The stuck-up Eldari, the debaucherous Drukari, and the theatrical Harlequins. These misfits just could not fit in with their kinfolk, and so set out into the galaxy to do whatever they wanted. And what they wanted to do was have a swashbuckling, piratical good time. So I've got the armored planer speed paint applied, and what's next? Well, speed paint, contrast paint, instant color have a bit of a reputation. Either they're ungodly sorcery that gives you a Midas touch to perfect miniatures, or they're overrated and are not all they're cracked up to be. And I kind of agree with both points, sort of. This is my mini after one coat of army painter speed paint over everything. And it's pretty good. It's not perfect, but for the time investment, this is excellent. Now, the problem is that some parts are a little desaturated and you can see a little bit of the white primer showing underneath. And so the way I would take this mini to the next level is with glazing. Look at this mini next to this mini. And for not that much extra work, a little bit of glazing and highlighting Boom! Look at how punchy those colors are. To glaze, I took the color that was on my model, orange, and to that I mixed in yellow to brighten it up so that it could be my highlight color. Once that was mixed, I thinned it down with some water. I want my paint to be thin enough that I can see my skin color through it. Then I put it right over the speed paint where I saw the Zenithal Prime showing through. I didn't put it everywhere, only a few spots, but it'll add so much to the overall finish. I added more yellow to my watery mixture and then put this over the same spots to continue my highlights and then pure watery yellow. This glaze will act as my reflections, bright dots of yellow glittering off of the pumpkin orange. My Eldar are the pumpkin spice of the Eldar. Contrast paint, speed paint, and instant color are all transparent paints with some additives that use physics to pool and darken in the recesses and slide away from the raised details. Now the downside of these technical paints is that you give up a lot of control. You put this paint on rather thick and let it do what it's going to do. The upside is you get a lot of really good base coat highlight and shadow in one step, and then you can use that as a really good base to work up from. The Eldar were a really good subject for this speed paint with an afterglaze because they use a lot of bright colors. And while I was investigating different army schemes before landing on my own invention of orange and black, which I would describe as Halloween chic, I read about the craft world Yandan. 
This is an Eldar craft world that was devastated by a Tyranid high fleet and almost went extinct, and they would have if not for the Spirit Stones. When an Eldar dies, they can pass their soul into a gem, where their consciousness resides forever, escaping death. This is especially important for the Eldar because all Eldar souls are bound to the Chaos God Slaanesh. And what is fun playtime for the Chaos God of Pleasure is endless torture for Space Elves. The craft world of Yandin's population being mostly reduced to souls and shiny rocks make use of tons of wraith constructs. Organic looking mech suits made from wraith bone and piloted by the nearly deceased Eldar. And I recently painted this scheme on a miniature we produced, the futuristic Elven Warlock. If you want to win a Slayer Sword, yeah, you're going to have to probably stick to more traditional methods of painting. But if you want really cool models for game day, it's good stuff. Now, onto those bases. For the base, I glued down big decorative fish tank rocks, which kind of just look like big decorative fish tank rocks, but I can save them with painting. I painted on a watery coat of black paint. Then I stippled on some white paint using a large dry brush to create the appearance of texture, even though these rocks are smooth like glass. Then I painted some white speed paint to blend the white texture into the gray rock. And then to make them look a bit more natural and lively, I painted on a patchy coat of brown wash and then green wash. These Eldar Corsairs are perhaps more honest than the rest of the Eldar race. Where the Eldari are clinging to the hope of rebuilding their galaxy-dominating empire and the Drukhari are obsessed with personal immortality, the Corsairs just steal stuff and have fun. Piratical fun. These models turned out great, but could use some terrain. Now the Eldar live in craft worlds, and you might expect craft worlds to look something like this. Picturesque, perfect planets. But in fact, they actually look like this. Humongous spaceships the size of planets that all Eldar live on. Well, not all Eldar, because the Dark Eldar live in Kamarag, and the Harlequins live in the Webway. And there's also some Eldar Exodites who live on random planets, but for the most part, all living Eldar live in these ships. And not only are they just a really cool sci-fi idea in general, the idea of world ships, but these show off the big heap and help of Grimdark that has been applied to the Eldar, because when Eldar pass away, their soul is transferred into a soul stone. And those soul stones are then plugged into the wraith bone construct that the ship is made out of to create what is called the infinity circuit, which actually powers the spaceship and gives it a huge boost of its psychic power. And so it's a very 40k design philosophy, the Eldar, where it's something you know, elves, and then it's a big heaping scoop of grim dark, where they all live on spaceships that are literally graveyards. It makes for some very interesting and very haunted architecture. And speaking of haunted, that's right, our Patreon. We have a Minute of the Month Club. This month's minis are the Futuristic Elven Warlocks. The STLs are available and Patreon supporters get a discount on physical 3D prints. And lots of high quality terrain STLs hosted by comics, games, and things. We also have viewer model critique videos, a weekly hobby hangout live stream, and more. It's the best way to support us, so head on over to Patreon and get access to even more Eons of Battle. We also have merch, link in the description. I want my Eldar Corsairs to have a really interesting piratical place to stand, so I'm going to be painting up a piece of EOB terrain. The way I tackled the Corsairs was a bright Xenothal undercoat, followed by many layers of glazing, and that works perfectly for small figures with lots of detail. But it's not going to do the trick for a large figure with low detail, so the way I'm going to tackle this is... Sponging. Sponging is a very useful tool for mini painting. You can buy some chip brushes, those little foam paint brushes that you get from the hardware store, but I actually prefer to use recycled pieces of foam I get from random products pretending to be higher quality than they really are. In fact, in the so-called good old days of metal models, Games Workshop actually used to put this foam in the packaging to keep the models safe. I probably have some laying around. Yep, I got a second edition Space Marine Devastator and it has a big old piece of foam keeping it nice and safe. And actually, the Eldar still have a lot of models that look like this. That's not entirely true, like half of their range has been updated within the last 10 years, but they do still have a couple of models that if you pick them up, they're going to come looking a lot like this. The Eldar still have a few original Retro 40k models, although now sold as resin casts. Resin casts from the old Metal Masters. Thin, flat models that, to be fair, were pretty good 30 years ago. Things have come a long way since then. For example, this was Death Jester in 1988, and this is Death Jester today in 2022. If you look very closely at both of them, you'll see the new one has slightly more crisp detail. I put some black paint onto my wet palette and mixed in just a little gray paint. Then I worked this slightly not black mixture into my piece of foam and began to sponge this all over my piratical Eldar cabana style home. This sponging will create texture and allow the black primer to show through as my darkest layer. Then I added more gray to my black paint mixture and sponged this all over as well, putting just a little bit less than I did before. And I kept going like this, adding more and more gray paint into my mixture and stippling on less and less onto the model. 
The larger the model you're working with, the more layers you should add. When I do this on a small mini, I might only do two layers, dark gray and gray. But on this big old hut, I did six. Now it's really starting to look like something. This is essentially my Zenithal highlight. And sponging is a great way to finish 3D printed parts because it really hides the layer lines. And if anything, the layer lines just sort of enhance the overall grit and texture that you're trying to create on the model. But now it's time to introduce a little color. For colors, I decided to copy my pirate boys, taking the cold green of the base and the orange from their armor. I put some speed paint camo cloak onto my wet palette and put this on the sinewy veins that covered the elf structure. I gave these areas one thick coat and then wiped away a little from the top to create some highlights. I've never been that big a fan of the Eldar, but for some reason, one of my all time favorite miniatures is an Eldar miniature and that is the Warwalker. Kind of the Eldar's version of the ATST from Star Wars. I just think that's a darn slick model. It's from, I want to say it's from 2006, the same year as the Wraith Lord came out. And it's just a really good model. I love that it makes use of the, um, the Eldar transport canopy from the Wave Serpent. It's the same cockpit, it's just uh, glued upside down. And I just think it's a great kit. For the larger areas like the Wraith Bone trunk and walkways, I sprayed the Army Painter Speed Paint through my airbrush. I know people spray Games Workshop Contrast paint through the airbrush, and it might look decent, but I just can't bring myself to spray away $2 worth of paint in a few seconds. After the green, I sprayed some orange on the eggs. This contrasted nicely against the green, although once it was applied, I did notice something about this color combination on this round, organic-shaped terrain. Ah, <sighs> I've painted a pumpkin. You know what though? You know, it works. It works. The Eldar would make a pumpkin. This is gonna make a great little pumpkin patch hideout for my piratical Eldar Corsairs. You know, I haven't given the Eldar the credit they deserve. From the outside, they look very obvious. Elves. They're a bit fancy and they have magic. But Old Games Workshop has actually managed to do a lot with them. And I love my Corsairs. Hiding out in their pumpkin-inspired wraith construct home where they plan their heists and piratical adventures. This was a fun week learning all about the space elves. And in fact, I was so down with the Eldar clown. I might have, I might have bought a few more of them. These are dark Eldar for a different kill team I want to put together. But please let me know if you would like to see the Drukhari get a very similar treatment. Also let me know in the comments below if you think, no, I have absolutely not convinced you. You still hate the knife ears and you would like me to do anything else. That is good information to know too. Bye bye.